And I find the use of that term stream is interesting because we're talking about a meteor stream, right? And we're looking at events that may have been caused by the influx of enormous amounts of cosmic material. And I think that's the best way to explain what happened at the end of the last ice age. A lot of the critics have tried to oversimplify it and say, well, you had just one object coming in that that can't explain it, right? But the ideas, this, the models that have evolved are not just a single event, but multiple events, almost like, again, back to the British new catastrophists. The idea of sort of a of a of an impact epoch, which has to do with meteor streams will precess, they will move. So there will be times when the Earth is crossing the stream, and other times when the Earth is more or less missing the stream. It's just the analogy I use is you're out driving down a country road, and you know you're all by yourself. You're listening to some tunes. You're kicked back. There's nobody else on the road, so you know. It's relaxed. You're not paying a lot of attention, right? Your, your, your probabilities of getting an impact are very low. But now you come up to an intersection, right? Now there's cars. It's a major intersection. There's cars going both ways. So now your probabilities of getting into an accident are going to increase by several orders of magnitude. Mm. Now, to take the analogy further, you'll know that sometimes there might, if, if it's 3 a.m., maybe your probabilities are low. If it's 5 p.m., your probabilities are high. And if you just shut your eyes and you cross that intersection, boom, you might get slammed. Same way, think of that. Think of a, a meteor stream, and in that meteor stream, there are pockets where the material is denser and other places where it's spread out much finer. And there will be times of the year or times within, say, a millennia where you may have the Earth intersecting that meteor stream in a much more denser part than, than other centuries. During that period, you're going to have an increased probability of something happening. And I think this is the, the model that's emerging now. That we, we're, we're realizing that, that the structure of space in Earth's vicinity is a whole lot more complex than we had previously even imagined a generation ago. It completely makes sense, but it is horrific to think that the history of the human race and its survival is dependent upon, in a lot of ways, luck. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought I would run through this. Just I call this close encounters. Not This is not by any means comprehensive, but I've been tracking this shit for decades now. So I call this close encounters, and we'll just—I'm just, just going to go through very fast, just to give the impression of what we're talking about okay. here. Okay, we started out, uh, yeah, this '88. That's when I started tracking this stuff. 1988. Yeah, March 23rd, 1988. We Earth just dodges big asteroid. Now we'll just go through, and you can see, 1989, <clears throat> giant asteroid makes close pass by Earth. 1991, near miss of Earth by small asteroid. Now, of course, the small asteroid can still do a hell of a lot of damage. Tunguska was a small asteroid. 1994, <clears throat> asteroid comes within 65,000 miles of Earth. 96, it was a close call for planet Earth. <clears throat> 2000, study raises number of dangerous asteroids. Later in that year, asteroid estimates too low. Asteroid makes close approach. Scientists worry over asteroids. Huge asteroid nearly misses Earth, January 7, 2002. January 7th, large asteroid passes close oh, to Earth. An asteroid large enough to wipe out France. <clears throat> yes. Or it'll just pass Earth at a distance of a half a million miles. So that's twice the distance to the moon. Had it been on a collision course, it would have created one of the, great, one of the worst disasters in human history, said Stephen Pravdo, the neat project manager at NASA's Jet Propulsion wow. Laboratory. And this is just 2002. Yep. How did it hit? Yeah. March 8th, you know, an, ar an one. asteroid large enough to have flattened the city, buzzed Earth earlier this month, and was not seen until after it flew harmlessly by. Oh, my God. That's the thing about the sun, right? Like that it was coming from the sun, so it was coming from that same area? In, in Tunguska, yes. Now, this, I just, unless you're looking in the right place for it, you're not going to necessarily see it. I like the article, too, highlighting cosmic blind spot. Yeah. That's a terrifying thought. Yeah. And then the same year, June 14th, 
Asteroid 2002MN gives Earth its closest shave in years. Uh, an asteroid the size of a football pitch, well, that would be, you know, 100 yards in, in diameter, which is quite a bit bigger than the Tunguska. That one's close, 75,000 miles. Yeah. That's really close. That's really close. Well inside Earth's orbit, or the moon's orbit, yeah. rather. Sa same event. Asteroid um, the size of a football field. August 7th, near-miss asteroid whizzes past Earth. This is 800 meters wide. Mm. Now, that's many times bigger than the Tunguska. This this eight hundred meters could wipe out an area bigger than the state of Texas, and it would have global effects. So eight football fields, yeah, and it can kill an entire state and probably put the entire Earth yes. into some sort of a nuclear winter. Yes, yes. Two thousand three, closest asteroid yet flies past Earth, eighty eight thousand feet. Two thousand and four, January thirteenth, Earth almost put on impact alert. Near miss raises rocky questions. Yes, it does. March 18th, asteroid soars past Earth oh so closely. 2005, February 4th, asteroid 2004 MNN, a really near miss. Mm. Comet strikes surprisingly more likely. So this is, we're just barely getting by. We, We're like a guy in an action movie where they're shooting at him and he never gets hit. <laughs> he never gets hit, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. So you can see, I'll just yeah. just keep going here. Well, for, in, for, in for one folks day. that are just listening, he's highlighting article after article after article, headline after headline, asteroid just buzzed Earth, came closer to the, than yeah. the moon. And then here we go in 2013. Yeah. Fly by Earth. You see, we go from February 15th. Now there's another one that year, September 16th. Um, that one that one was thirteen hundred feet in diameter, so ten times more diameter than Tunguska. Uh, Four, 40,000 miles an hour. Yeah. <sighs> Halloween asteroid resembling a skull. Oh my God! It does. Look yeah, at that. doesn't it? That's terrifying. We can <laughs> kill by bizarre. a flying skull. So this is a very, very common thing. Yes. And we're just getting, and it oh, just, my God, 27,000 miles? Yeah. One-eighth the distance between the Earth and the moon. Yeah. So it's really common. Yes. And now we're just looking at when we could record it, when they can track it and measure it, which is within the last 100 years or so. Less, Less. 25 or 30 years. Yeah. So really. with, with this taken into consideration... And then you go back, you know, 11,000, 12,000 plus years, the amount of times that this has happened has probably been just off the charts. Hundreds of times. Hundreds of times. Yeah. Here we go. Snuck up on us. Scientists yeah. stunned by city killer asteroid that just missed Earth. City killer initially, but probably kill a whole lot more afterwards. Yeah. We were talking about Tonga earlier, um, the, the volcano that killed... Most people, mm -hmm. it got the human race down to a Toba. few thousand. To, excuse me, Toba. Yeah, seventy-four thousand. Right? Yeah. Seven, yeah, well, seventy-four thousand years ago. Go. Yeah, I think it got people down to a few thousand. They don't really know how many, but right. Genetic bottleneck. But it's the same sort of effect, right? Because of the volcano spraying ash into the sky. Yes, a, a volcanic winter would be very similar to an impact winter. <sighs> very much so. So this is. It's astonishingly, astonishingly common. Yes. But 600 miles in diameter? Oh, Jesus. Four asteroids are buzzing the Earth in flybys today. Three of them were discovered within the last 24 hours. This is 2019. Yeah. Wow. So it's, it's actually possible that something is headed our way right now. We don't even know about it. Oh. There's no doubt something is headed our way right now. I mean, yeah, because, see, these things, you got to bear in mind, these things are on orbits. And those orbits, uh, you can track those orbits. And anything that's going to hit us in the future is on a trajectory right now that if we could discover it, track it, we'd go, okay, this thing's going to hit us in 2029 or whatever the case may be. So, yeah, it, the, there... Yeah, so look at this. 2,000 feet wide whiz past our planet tomorrow, and this is 2019. Yeah. 
NASA admits we're not going to know when a space rock flies at Earth. There's the other, there's a problem also with the gravity of the sun, correct? Like they don't quite see things that are headed our way just because of the mass of the sun, the way it affects. Yeah, and what we're talking about with the Tunguska is that, you know, if, if stuff is coming, what you would call the perihelion passage, where it's passed closest to the sun, and now it's coming from around the sun, yeah, you'd have to basically look into the sun to see it. So it's going it, to be very easy to... Very easy to miss. So here at June 2020, biggest asteroid to pass close and undetected this year. Biggest asteroid of 2021 is going to zoom past Earth tonight, flying as fast as 100,000 kilometers per hour. That's 60,000 miles per hour. 60,000 miles per hour. Huge asteroid to pass Earth, and this is Look at the date on that. 12 8. Yeah. That was just not even two months ago. Yeah. One that's 850 feet wide. NASA asteroid warning. Eiffel Tower-sized asteroid narrowly missed Earth in December. Jeez. Asteroid, this is January 11th. This is a couple weeks ago. Yeah. January 11th, an asteroid estimated to be a kilometer wide will pass Earth on January 18th. It will pass within 1.2 million miles of our planet. Which is far enough that we're completely safe. But sort see, of. in aggregate of all of this, <laughs> what we're seeing is that unlike our conceptions of near-Earth space a couple of generations ago, we realize that there's all kinds of cosmic beasts that right. live in the space that we inhabit. Yeah, because that 1.2 million miles is far, but it's not if you think about how vast space is. Right. Yep. Oh, so, boy. Yeah. And there you can see from this okay, graph. Okay, look at this chart. Now, this chart's terrifying. Near-Earth asteroid discoveries. And then you look at the difference between 1980, where we had very little understanding of this, and 2022. Well, this is this goes to 2020, I guess. What is the end of the chart? Around 2020, yeah. So at the end little, of the chart, probably more like 2018, I think, when this chart was done. And because of scientific discoveries and the ability to measure, it's off the charts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. It is. Oh my God. Five billion dollar asteroid. So what is it in, in this asteroid? Well, they got all kinds of precious minerals. metals in them. Yeah. Which is very interesting because that opens up some some possibilities for the future if we, the human species, are up to it. If we can figure out how to mine them. Yeah. yeah. And there's there's companies already forming around this idea. I wouldn't be surprised if Elon is thinking along these lines. When you're thinking about something that's going 60,000 miles an hour and it's as big as, you know, multiple football fields, how... I mean, how prepared are we to even deflect something like that? At this point, we're not. We're just not. We're not. We're sitting ducks. We're, we're screwed. Ugh. We're screwed. So, do you have canned food in your house? <laughs> yeah, I got about six months worth. Do you? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. That's not quite enough, is it? Probably not. It could. Yeah, because really. <laughs> We've got about six months worth of food before our food starts running out. It, for the world? For the world. Yeah. So, you know, if we had a dusting, a cosmic winter, a volcanic winter, uh, I mean, that, that shut down agriculture for a year or two, half the population of the earth is going to be dead within the next year. That's not an exaggeration. So, Well, also, you have to deal with uh, the mammals dying as well, right? Because they're going to be without food. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have... See, now we get into a mass extinction level event. We had that at the Younger Dryas. If you think of all of the megafauna, megafauna is over 44 kilograms body weight or about 100 pounds, right? The planet lost <clears throat> about half of all megafaunal species during that Younger Dryas. Now, there was already animals disappearing leading up to it because I think could be attributed to whatever happened at 14,600 years ago where I talked about earlier meltwater pulse 1A, right? That's when the, the shit really started to seem like it started coming down. And then it peaked Younger Dryas, 12,850. 
And then we had the impact winter for 1,300 years. And at the end of that, it wasn't a gradual warming. It was a catastrophic warming. And <clears throat> by that time, I think whatever species had managed to survive some of the earlier events may have succumbed at that point. You know, the controversies come down to, was it nature? Was it climate? Was it human hunters? I think it was all of that, but I think hunters was probably a minor uh, contributor to it. Because for one thing, it now appears that the human population took a major crash at the same time. Like, we see that there's evidence that the Clovis culture in North America pretty much completely disappeared right at that boundary. Well, they weren't the only ones around the planet. Now, if you go and you look at... Um, you know, some of the archaeological evidence, one of the things that you see over and over again is, well, there was this cultural group in Japan or wherever. I just read a paper on that recently. And apparently there was some kind of social disruption and they got up and they migrated and moved away. Well, maybe they did, but maybe they didn't move away. Maybe they didn't survive. And there was a tendency to think, well, you have this evidence of cultural habitation of this area for centuries or millennium, and then suddenly you don't. Well, people must have picked up and moved. But maybe that's not the explanation. Maybe it's more a case of <laughs> they got wiped out. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the clip, don't forget to hit like, share it with a friend, and subscribe for more.